Hey, you guys. Hey, everyone. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new here on this channel. We try to cover all things reality, TV news, and gossip, as well as trending topics. And once again, we are going to be talking about David and Janelle. I did not plan on doing two streams in the same day about David and Janelle, but I got another email. Shout out to the, I don't know if they want me to call them out by name, but I have somebody that literally every time something is released, especially like about David and Janelle, they are on it. They are emailing me. So shout out, you know who you are. Um, I got another email and I was like, and this email gives more info as to what Janelle's claims were against David Eason when she asked for the RO. Um, she asked that the judge take David's weapons, that he not be allowed to have weapons. She made claims that he has made comments and statements that leave her feeling like she is not safe if he has said weapons. Um, she also asked for custody or control over the animals, the pets. And, you know, I, I was like, that's a new one. But honestly, that makes sense. If I was Janelle, I would ask for custody or control of the pets as well, given David's history. So there's a lot going on here. And I don't know if he is a felon. I guess he's not. Um, so we're going to be talking about more of it. Also, I did have a few comments on my last video saying, like, we should be supportive of Janelle. We should be singing her praises, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. And what I will say is, like I said, last time she left and she moved to Tennessee, I was very supportive of her. I made videos during that time. And in those videos, I was like, you got this, Janelle. You can do this. Very supportive. Um, her going back and really making it out, like the things that she tells us when they're separated, where she tells us that he would hit Kaiser to get her attention. Was it Kaiser? Or he would hit Inslee to get her attention. That one time when they were mad, he locked Kaiser in the car, um, the collarbone situation, all the 911 calls. When she would tell us these things, and we would hate David. And then the second she would get back with him, we would be like, but what about this? What about that? What about you saying this? She would be like, oh, you guys are lying. Y'all are twisting what I said. That's not what happened. So it's really hard to support somebody that the second she takes him back, she defends him. Here's the thing. It is what it is. It ain't what it ain't. You make these claims against David. Some of these things, like we know these things happen. If you decide to take him back, you don't have to come out and, and defend him. Just remain quiet on it. Like if I was with a man like David, just for sake. Like, for instance, if I was with a man like David and he did all these things to me and it was public knowledge, I'm not going to get on here accusing the media of lying. I just wouldn't acknowledge it because I'm not going to make myself out to be a liar. I'm not going to become a liar to defend this man who is a piece of crap. If I decide I want to be back with him and I want to accept those things and I want to push through after him doing those things to me and my child, I'm not about to get online and gaslight everybody into believing that what they heard me say, the 911 calls that they heard, the police doc, the court documents that they seen, none of that's true. None of that's real. No, no, no. So that's why I do struggle. Like I said, I, I, I've tried to be supportive of Janelle. Um, but, and a lot of people's like, y'all don't know their life. Y'all don't know their life. I talk to people that know them. I talk to people that know David and Janelle quite well. I don't talk to one person. I don't talk to two people. I don't talk to three people. I talk to several people, okay? that know David and Janelle. There's a reason. And let me tell you something, David, I mean, Janelle, I hope you leave him and I hope you do the best that you can do. You financially, you can take care of you and the kids. That's awesome that you don't have to rely on a man to take care of y'all because a lot of women do and a lot of women stay stuck in the situation for that reason because financially they can't make it. So I'm glad you're not in that boat. And I hope you leave David and you stay gone and you stay away from him and you protect you and your kids and you do what is right. I hope you do those things. But as somebody that knows that David got physical with a 14 year old, with Janelle's 14 year old boy, and Janelle sat by and didn't jump out and try to get David off of him. And then in the aftermath, took the to social media to bash her 14 year old son. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do struggle to be supportive of Janelle. I really do. And I, I apologize for that. I'm not perfect either. But anyways, you guys, we're going to, there's more out. The Ashley just put out an article. So we're going to go over that. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, what's crazy is somebody that commented, there was this one person that commented on a lot of comments, and they said they don't even know who Janelle is. They're like, I don't even know who she is, but she's apparently she's trying to leave an abusive relationship, and you guys are just like dogpiling her. And people in the comments are like, well, if you don't know who she is, maybe you should like look her, at, look her up, because if you were to know who she is, you might not be that supportive either. You know what I'm saying? So this person that was commenting all over the chat, like didn't even know who Janelle was. Um, anyways, let's get into it, you guys. Okay, so, um, like I said, another article has come out. Janelle Evans pleads with the courts to make David Eason surrender his guns because he threatens to shoot people if someone makes him mad. Not shocked. I believe this. Also, let me say, I do believe Janelle's allegations against David. Um, in court paperwork that's been obtained by media outlets, it includes a request for a domestic violence order of protection against David or Janelle and her three kids. Janelle issued a warning to the police that her estranged husband, David, has weapons in his possession. In the identifying information form filled out by Janelle on March 13th, she notes that all David, although David has no permit to carry a concealed handgun and no permit to purchase a handgun and or crossbow, she warns law enforcement officers that David is a potential threat because he has guns. In the filing, Janelle claims that David took, without her consent, a number of items that belonged to her, including a pistol, and a 300 blackout rifle valued at two grand. Janelle wrote in the court documents, both firearms are mine and registered in my name. Janelle also states that David makes verbal threats to her people when he gets mad. She says he threatens to shoot people or use his weapons if someone makes him mad. We've seen this on social media. We've seen David waving around the weapons threatened i mean he literally threatened like the fbi or whatever it was that came out to his house after he made he made posts about the president at the time and they they sent like the secret service out there and the secret service got stuck in his yard when they were leaving he like, jumped on social media to like make threats i'm like you're the only person that gets away with this much she also checked the box to indicate that david has allegedly made threats to off himself she said he says maybe if i were gone or dead things would be better just get help, you know, because I do feel like David has a lot of issues. Um, I don't want anybody to off themselves. Like, get help, David. You have anger issues. You don't do things the way that you need to. You don't treat your family the way a, a man should treat their family. So go get help to try to fix that. A judge denied Janelle's request for the ex parte DV protective order for herself and her three kids. So immediate relief was not granted. However, a hearing has been set for later this month for Janelle and David to argue their case before the judge, who will then decide if a regular non-ex parte DV order of protection should be granted. Janelle also asked the judge to order David to not cruelly treat or abuse any animals owned, possessed, kept, or held as a pet by either party or minor child residing in the household. Janelle stated in the same documents that David ran over one of the family's puppies with her car back in February. They got into a fight. He jumped into the car, took off, and ran over and killed one of the puppies. Janelle asked that she be granted custody and control of any of the family's animals slash pets. Janelle also stated in the documents that she filed that David has allegedly showed up at her house numerous times following their split in February with no reason to be there. According to Janelle, the only reason for him coming was to harass her. On one incident that she detailed that happened on March 6th, she claimed she was coming down her driveway and noticed that David was sitting in her BMW on the side of the road, waving her down. She stated she immediately called the police. Janelle Easton and her children would like to be protected at all costs from David Easton. Janelle Easton is scared of David if he gets mad. David causes Janelle and her children extreme anxiety almost every day. 
Janelle doesn't want her children exposed to this behavior that David has been exhibiting over the years. She asked the judge to order David to have no contact with her or the three kids and to stay away from the land. Oh, not just the land, the kids' school, and any place that Janelle shelters. So I guess like the she shed as well. Janelle asked the judge, I want David to be ordered to have no contact with me. I want David to be ordered. I want the court to order David not to assault, threaten, or abuse, follow, harass, or interfere with me and my children. Janelle claims that David has a history of physically acting out to include punching or hitting holes, hitting holes and walls, throwing objects, and stealing things from Janelle. We talked about that earlier today. These former acts of physical intimidation have given Janelle PTSD, and she is scared that this behavior might happen again soon. Some of those behaviors were in front of the children over the years, she alleges. The hearing to decide whether or not a regular DV protective order will be granted is set for later this month, like I said. I have a feeling that, that over the next few days, like more bits of info will come out in regards to this uh, court order. Because this is, I've noticed one thing since I've started doing this, like if I pull a FOIA, I go live and I read everything that I got from the FOIA. I've noticed that like media outlets, they'll pull a FOIA and then they'll do like, four or five articles about the FOIA. Like, you know, uh, this particular article covered Janelle wanting his guns removed and wanting custody of the animals. While The Sun has put out like two articles already about the same court documents. So they break it down a lot. I guess just that maybe to have more content. Um, but yeah, so she filed for the restraining order. It was denied and she's, and I believe her. I mean, a lot of people like, I believe her. I believe her. And I'm like, I believe her too. I don't think she's, I mean, I don't believe a lot that Janelle says, but I do believe these things. I do believe he's violent. I do believe he makes threats. I do believe that everybody in the house walked around on eggshells around him. But those are the things that we've been saying for years and Janelle has called us out, you know? So, uh, LB, would you interview David? Yeah, I would interview David. Um, he is not at the house. He oh, and that's another thing. So after the break-in, Janelle got permission for him to come back to the house, right? And I said, and I said then, whenever the break-in happened, I said, I feel like this is a ploy to get David back at the house. Well, Janelle claimed because people called her out. They were like, You're so scared of him, but you literally just got him back at the house after the break-in to protect his family. And she tweeted saying that the authorities made her have David come back to the house. That it wasn't necessarily that she wanted David there, but the authorities made her bring him back. So this is over on X. Her talking about that. Anything, I'll be there. I wish I would have answered the phone when you called me when someone was trying to break in the house. I'd have been there. Okay, so she's on a live stream, a TikTok live stream with Brian Dahl. And this is just a clip where he says, I wish you would have, I wish I would have answered the phone when you called me when somebody was breaking into the house. I would have been there like quick, fast, and in a hurry. So you can't really hear what he's saying, but that's what Ryan Dolph is saying. She goes on to say, she says, yeah, I called you. I called like three other guys, some of David's friends, and they like nobody answered. So she called David to come home. David said he would come home. She then called the police and said, well, the only person I can get to come stay here is David. And they said, okay, that's fine with us. But here's the thing. A police officer telling Janelle, okay, yeah, that's fine for David to come back and stay at the house if you want him to. Did that police officer know that there was an RO? Did that police officer get permission from the judge? Because the only judge that could have given permission for David to return to that house would be the judge. So now I'm wondering, did the police officer not... Uh, Here's the situation. A break-in happens. Janelle calls the police. Officers come out. She says, somebody tried to break into my house. Here's the video. My husband's not here. We're separated. Me and my husband are separated. Did she tell them, well, there's an RO. My husband can't be here with my child. Even if she did. Maybe through all the, the discussions of what went down, maybe there was multiple officers out there. She told one, but not the other one. Maybe the officer that said, yeah, sure. I mean." Your husband can come back. I mean, I know you are separated, but as long as you're happy, 
Like, as long as you're okay with him coming back to stay here, then we are too. Did he know about the RO? Even if he did, he could not give permission. Yeah, I know. And I, I tried calling you. I tried calling even David's closest friends at the time because I was like, I just need a male here because the cop was requesting a male to be there. And um, I don't think the cop was requesting a male to be there. I think the cop said, I think Janelle said, I'm scared to stay home alone now. And he said, well, why don't you get somebody to come stay with you? Preferably a male. <laughs> So they could be intimidating to if if the guy returns. Um. Yeah. Everyone was sleeping. So. But I appreciate you saying that because um. Yeah. It was it was bad. It was really bad. And we saw the whole thing. That's what's crazy. What's crazy is when someone sees you and they're trying to break in and they look at you dead in the eye through your door, and then instead of running away. They try to pull the door even harder and harder and harder. And it, he didn't stop until he. Mind you, we've not seen any evidence of that. We have not seen any evidence of this guy, like really pulling at the door, trying to get in. We've seen him walking around the property saying, hello, hello. <laughs> Where is the evidence that this guy really tried to get into the house? I haven't seen that. Saw Jace, like saw a male other than a female. So. Everyone's like, oh, why she wake up Jace? Oh, why she involve him? Because he's tall. I'm five feet. He's five three. He's way taller than me. Um, he's a little bit more intimidating than my little short. Yeah, I'm not on David's side either. Like, I'm on nobody's side here. I think they're both like they don't need to be with each other. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do believe she probably wanted him home. I do believe she was probably jealous and didn't want him around females ass so <laughs> so he walked out and it the guy actually backed up and walked away and went to my shed and then tried to get in there but then i yelled at him and then he went back through the woods when he left which was so weird to break went back through the he went back through the woods because that's where he came from because he down the road that there there's a house on the road where they have parties and there's a bunch of people down there and i think he just probably walked in the woods to pee drunk walked back the wrong way, walked up to Dale's house, not under, like, oh, dang, I'm lost. This is not where I'm meant to be. So he's probably trying to figure out, hey, where am I? Like, he would, if he probably could have talked to Janelle, he probably would have been like, hey, so I was at somebody's house, so-and-so, uh, we were drinking, and I walked to the woods to pee, um, and I came out here. You know the way back? Like, this man was not literally trying to do anything. The woods. So... House. Not down my driveway to the road, just like through the woods. In your house didn't take absolutely anything other than trying to get in your house. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then it's like, what was his intentions? Because he was just trying to get in the house. He didn't steal nothing. So. Because he was lost. He was lost. So, yeah, you guys, I, I think that was the one where she said she called multiple people and then she called David. Did he really tell that she should? Nope. He did not. Yeah, there was an article that came out that said he had thrown things around the shed. Nope, that didn't happen. There was nothing thrown around the shed. So, that's where we're at right now, you guys. Um, so, yeah, here's a comment. I'm going to respond to a couple of comments just so people understand. I've been covering David and Janelle on YouTube for five years, okay? Trust and believe, when I started covering them, I I was a, more supportive of them doing the right thing and being good parents and, and trying to do better. And I often would encourage Janelle to leave, to, to take care of her and the children. And Janelle has always been the breadwinner of this family. I understand, and I used to say this all the time. I used to say, you know, when you are in a relationship, an abusive relationship it takes like uh on average like seven times of leaving before you finally leave i know that i understand that and i do think they are both victims of abuse from each other i really do i really think that she abuses him in some sort of way and he abuses her in some sort of way i think they gaslight each other they lie on each other they i, I think it's a really bad toxic relationship okay um do they ever talk to the guy that was at no they've never found him to my knowledge um, I'm utterly appalled by the amount of victim blaming and shaming going on here. 
Janelle is trying to get away from this guy, and all y'all can do is tear her down. Do better. Tell your body language video. Pinpoints the moment she started lying. Yeah, anybody that didn't see that, go check it out. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for uh, mentioning that. I also believe that David called her kids homophobic slurs. David, David has done that so many times. David on his Facebook page, people will come to his Facebook and like there was this one guy that left a comment and the guy was married to a man and David commented a slur to him. So David doesn't shy away from doing that. He's not embarrassed about it. Like David's like, can't nobody cancel me, you know, because I don't believe in it. That's like Kanye West. He's like, if you don't believe in being canceled, you can't be canceled. And I think, I mean, I think that's right because if even if you people hate you, you just keep coming back and just stay. Continue, can you continue doing what you do? It's like they can't be canceled. David does not shy away from making those type of comments. I've seen it. You know, we've seen it. And he's done it repeatedly. So I do believe that he would say something like that. I really do. And I do believe that it's a scary situation. Do I believe that David versus Janelle? Janelle has, she doesn't stand a chance. But I've also seen things from her side as well. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think while Janelle is the victim in some sense, it's been so much, like so much, so much, so much. And it comes to a point, if you abuse me and I decide to, I decide to stay, it is what it is. But if I sit back and allow you to abuse my children and, to st and decide to stay, I'm going to understand. I'm going to get some backlash for that. It is what it is. I don't know. You know, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Also, there's somebody that made a comment saying, if you leave the house, it indicates that you're more at fault for the divorce. I don't think that's true at all. Um, I've never heard that. States that require separation for a length of time usually have stricter laws regarding the sanctity of marriage, meaning that will penalize whoever walks away first. Um, not when there's abuse in the home. If there's there's literally been people that has had to sneak away in the middle of the night with the kids and they get the house in the divorce. Um, yeah, and that's the thing is Janelle knows that David has made these comments and has stayed with him. David, I mean, Janelle knows all these things about David, knows that he makes these type of slurs, knows exactly who he is, but has went back to him so many times and then called us out for continuing to call him out. Saying like y'all are lying, y'all are twisting things. Um, stop dissing her. Victims aren't always ready to tell their stories. I'm not forcing her to tell her story. She's saying what she wants to. She's got social media platforms where she talks about this stuff. I'm not forcing her to talk about anything. If she's willing to do it now and try to take steps to do it safely, then shut up and let her do it. This is my job. <laughs> my channel is an entertainment reality TV entertainment news channel. It's what I do. I cover from sister wives, teen mom, former teen mom, mama Jude. It's what I do. I, I, I cover these people. And sometimes I do have to question, should I, should I talk about this? Is this like, it is hard to figure out that line, but let me tell you something. I advocate for the children. Okay. I advocate for the children. So while it's great that Janelle is getting out of this relationship, like applies to her for that. Um, those children have not been safe for quite some time. And she stayed and she knew that she knew they weren't safe and she stayed there and she forced those kids to be in a household where she knew they weren't safe. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. You know what I'm saying? I know she really can't. I've always heard that. Yeah, and exactly. I try to be, I, I don't like bash her. I don't bash Janelle. I, I try to be as easygoing as possible. Let me tell you, there's way more creators on here that literally I, like say really nasty things. Um, 
Yeah. There was a reason the restraining order didn't go through because the courts are tired of wasting their time. Yeah, they know Janelle. And here's the thing. It didn't go through because she just called the police officers the other day after the break-in saying, well, the only person I can get to come stay at the house with me to protect us is uh, David Eason. Can he come back? We need him for protection. And they were like, okay, yeah, sure. If you need protection then sh and he wants to come, yeah, sure, by all means, let him come. So she just told the courts that she needed David there to protect the family. So now to say she needs protection from him, they're like, well, this doesn't really make much sense. I'm going to deny it for now. Come back on such date and bring your evidence, you know? Uh, leave these people alone. Obviously, we don't know anything going on in their relationship. But, dude, not everyone's relationship is perfect. This is her reality, not ours. Um, I don't know everything that's going on on their relationship. I'm commenting on the stuff they put out. I don't. And here's the thing. I was going to say I don't proclaim to know more than what they put out. But actually, I do. Because, like I said, I talk to several people that know them. I talk to people that know them, know them, know them, know them, know them. So when I'm told things, I talk about it. Uh, when they put things out, we talk about it. So, I mean, I'm, I was kind of shocked to see these comments. Seriously, instead of bashing her when women are being abused, it's not easy to just leave. Half the time, we don't have the courage. We will feel like we lost it all. And she's famous. So, boom, what do you want her? What do you want? Her to be with him or not? I don't want her to be with him. I want her to be a good mom and provide for her and her family and try to make amends with her son for all that she's done to him. You know, the sitting back and watching him be abused, then bashing him online, saying that he was the aggressor against her huge husband while defending him, making posts saying how great David Eason was when literally a week and a half prior, he had attacked, choked out her son and her son was in a mental health facility. Like, I know when, like, when, when there's abuse involved, um, to say anything against that person, it's like, oh, you guys are victim blaming. No, we're not. This is not your average situation here, okay? So, I mean, and this person was like, I don't know anything about this, but, um, but you guys should uh, do better. And it's like, dude, I did better for a long time. As someone who's going through a divorce with abuse, I've definitely it's definitely not easy after eight years of walking away and getting out of the house. Yeah, and that's the thing is like I can sympathize with people. I know this, like I know people that's went through it, and I know people going through it now. And even with Janelle, like please stay away. You can do it. Like I've said that, like she can do it. I hope she does it. I hope she continues on this path that she's on, and she puts her and her kids first. Um. But I can't say I would be shocked if in a month or two or three, and I hope it's not the case, but it has happened so many times. How many times has Janelle left and went back to an account and then put everything off on her kids? Oh, no. Well, yeah, I said he was mean to them, but they started it. They started it. Like, so, um, yeah. So, yeah, I do want to point out that while I pray that she does great, people that don't know the backstory will sometimes think she's getting victim blamed. That is true. And I do encourage anybody that doesn't know Janelle's situation and what she has stood by and allowed David, has, David to do to her kids, her, her mom, her animals, and then she would publicly defend him against every like the things that we knew that were happening so i don't know she's a public figure by choice people are going to talk about her she never stops making a fool of herself yeah she makes it everyone's business though thing is we've asked david to support her leaving and then she turns around and says it wasn't true exactly yep exactly so that's what it is you guys and like i said I, i'm sure over the next few days more info will come out about the things that janelle 
alleged against David in the court filing. I just need to file for for the RO uh, or for the um paperwork myself. Uh, so we can do one video with everything in there rather than doing five different ones. Victim blaming. Hello, she blamed Jace, her fourteen year old son, for being choked by her hubby. Exactly. Um, updates on my son. Yes, my son had surgery yesterday on his hand. Um, it went great. I will say we were there longer. His surgery got moved up from eleven a.m. to six a.m. We got there at like five thirty a.m. and um, we got there and they're like, "Oh, y'all are using Doctor So and So. We're on his time." Just so y'all know, and, I, and I'm like, "What do you mean?" And she's like, oh, he just kind of strolls in whenever he wants. And I'm like, I was like, well, what time do the other doctors normally get here? She said, other doctors normally get here at about 7, 7, 15. I said, well, what time does this doctor normally get here? And she said, oh, you never can tell. I said, well, like it's estimate. Like what time does he normally get here? Oh, 8, 30, 9, 9, 15, 9, I'm like, okay. So he rolls in at about 8, 30, I think. Uh, shortly afterwards, they had my son already. Like the second he got there, we had already signed all the forms. They explained everything to him. So right after he got there, like less than 10 minutes, they wheeled him back to the room. He had his surgery. Um, the doctor came about an hour later. I was like, okay, we're done. He'll be back in here in about 15 or 20 minutes. He's in, he's in recovery right now. Well, 15 minutes passed, 20 minutes passed, 30 minutes passed. 40 minutes pass, and we're like, oh my God, like, where is he? Why is he not here yet? An hour passes, and finally he comes rolling in. So in recovery, he woke up uh, in some pain, so they had to give him medication for it. And because they had to give him medication, they had to keep him longer to make sure he did not have a reaction to the medicine. So he has a bright pink cast. Um, and the reason for that is because our nurse was this little old lady who was the sweetest. She was so sweet, so nice. And um, she was kind of joking with my son. She was like, what color cast do you want? Bright pink. And he's like, um, I don't know. And she's like, you should get a bright pink one. So when they came in, right before they come to get him, it was like, what color cast do you want? He's like, I'm going to do bright pink. So he comes back in from the operating room recovery with this bright pink cast on. And then the little old lady nurse comes in and she's like, hey, you got a bright, you got a bright pink cast, and he's like, "I got it in honor of you." So it was really sweet. It was really nice. She was tickled. She thought that was so no. She was like, "Oh, you don't have to do that." She's like, "Now you got to walk around with a bright pink cast," and he's like, "I like it." <laughs> so um, it was cool. They didn't. Um, they did not give me a after like a me and his girlfriend walked out of the room like three times, like kind of looking like. Where is he, you know? Um, and finally, they brought him back. Hey, hey, hey. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, it was. It, he's got a bright pink cast on. He likes it. I love it. But they did it really tight around his thumb. And he cannot move his thumb. So, he's like, can we go back and get this cut off? Uh, but anyways, you guys, like, share, subscribe. I'll be back more today. I do plan on doing at least one more. Um. I'm just trying to figure out how to do the Mama June recaps because WeTV is claiming every one of my videos, even though it falls within copy uh fair use. So you guys, um, you guys know I do the recaps, the Mama June recaps, and I play little clips. Y'all tell me why. Y'all tell me why they have claimed six of my videos. Six of my videos. And let me explain this to you guys. One video. Is an hour and 15 minutes long. I played three clips totaling 36 seconds. Three clips, 36 seconds. Another one, the, the recap is 53 minutes long. I used two clips totaling 26 seconds. Another video is 10 minutes and 39 seconds. I used three clips, 10 seconds, 47 seconds, and eight seconds. Another video, 43 minutes and 37 seconds seconds i used an eight second clip a five second clip and a six second clip like three clips and pretty much all of them and they are claiming every one of my videos so i want to continue doing the recaps but i i just appealed it so i'm waiting for that appeal to go through so i'm kind of like I, I, 
Um, yeah, he broke this one over here. So the only fingers that are wrapped are these two. Like these, these two are free. Um, these two are free to move, but it, the cast kind of got goes around. And it's like kind of tight on his thumb. I don't know if they meant for it to be that tight. Um, yes, I do know why Jace left April's because he ran away. Jace ran away from April's. Yeah, maybe so. We're gonna have to call call and ask them. Um, maybe so. I really do think. June and Pumpkin and all of them, they know I'm doing the recaps. A lot of people have said like they're not watching the show. They're watching my recaps to understand the show because they don't want to, they don't want to um support the show anymore after everything they've seen, right? So I think we TV is purposely here's the thing, they're taking the revenue from it. They're not blocking it to where people can't see. They're just taking the revenue. And I'm like, you're taking the revenue of an hour video that pertains less than 1% of your content, less than 1%. So I'm trying to figure out what to do there, you guys. So bear with me either way. Um, even if I have to do the recaps without clips, I guess we'll do that. Cause I do have a lot of people that's like, I want to watch, I, I want to know what's happening. I just don't want to watch it. So, um, yeah, anyways, you guys, yeah, even if you can't do clips anymore, I will still watch you instead of, thank you, thank you, thank you. Exactly, it's free advertising, so I mean, but yeah, anyways, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys back here later. Bye, guys.